Hello YouTube, it's Champion DJK coming at you again with another weekly update video. And as usual, I have some stuff to show you. So, um, I was out of town, um, well, not this last week from when you're watching this video, but the week before that. Um, I had to travel for work. I did find a couple of things while I was out. Uh, notably, we don't have a Kroger in my area. I did find the Kroger exclusive Hot Wheels. Well, I found all of them, including the Golden Toaster, but I did not pick up the Golden Toaster. I did pick up these three. I actually picked them up for my buddy Angel. Um, he won't mind, likely, so we're going to just open these in the second segment of the video and check them out. Um, they're just basic Hot Wheels, but they're Kroger exclusive colors. I'll just kind of show them to you um, in the second half of the video. And then um, I also found on my in my journey uh, some of the satin and gold uh, series. So we got uh, the Chevy 2, um, the Plymouth Superbird, and the uh, 67 Pontiac Firebird. So that's cool. Uh, picked up those three. They did not have any uh, 510 wagons, of course. Those were all picked over and gone. So did not find one of those. I still need one of those. I'm not too super concerned about it, but I'll, I'll get one eventually. All right, so that's that. And then I also found at an Ollie's. They have an Ollie's there. I don't have Ollie's here. And I was seeing a bunch of people... Now, this was in Kentucky, by the way, is where I had to go. Uh, so i seen a bunch of people post. Uh, they were finding Auto World and stuff at Ollie's at super discounted prices. Um, I actually grabbed two of these Cadillacs. They were $3.99 each. I had to pick one up. I couldn't leave them behind. There was two of them there, and I picked up both. The other one that I grabbed, and this is just, of course, I have. I think I have, like, four of these now. Um, so I ended up just giving one to my son to play with. So that's pretty awesome. We'll see how he does with uh, with that. So he's got one of these caddies to just kind of roll around and play with. He'll get tossed in a toy box and stuff. It's not the first Auto World I've given him, but uh, actually the first one is right here that I gave him. It was this one here. And the, the lighting's not going to be very good on this. You're not going to be able to see it very well. I'm trying another, uh, I guess direction for the camera here to give you something else to look at in the background but anyway this uh it's just missing the wing it's got scratches on it and stuff um the reason why i had to actually take it away though for now is because the wheel fell off one of the wheels fell off it's back on there now but it's just i have a daughter that's younger than my son and i don't want her eating uh the wheel off the car so all right so there's that i found that um that was pretty much all I found while I was, you know, traveling for work. Um, I got some mail while I was gone, and I also got some mail today, uh, including the RLC gasser that I just got, and I did a video on that, um, which actually I published today, which for you guys, today is Saturday, but uh, that was Thursday. And then I opened up my Ultra Red Silverado for the Free the Peace Friday episode, so check out that. Uh, that in that playlist um, if you haven't seen that series of videos yet check those out um yeah oh i found one other thing on my trip this right here uh this was actually the one i was the most excited about well what is it it's just a normal green light car it's a 2015 chrysler 200s from black bandit series 10 um I picked it up because I didn't have an example of the casting. Uh, I'm not going to open it in the second segment. This is going to go to a 10 car Tuesday episode. I'm kind of saving up some Black Bandit cars and I need 10 of them to make a Black Bandit 10 car Tuesday episode. I just didn't have it and it's series 10. I don't know what series they're on now. It seemed odd. This is copyright date 2014. So it's got to be from 2015 maybe. So this was still hanging there at that Hobby Lobby. And I snagged it so... Grab that up. All right, that was all I found um, from there. Um, I bought, I did do one eBay purchase, well, two. Um, this is it right here. This was from one seller. Um, so this is a Supra from Mini GT. We are definitely gonna check this out in the second segment of the video. 
Um, and then I got this Smokey and the Bandit Chrome Edition. That's another one I picked up that we're not going to open up in the second segment. It'll be part of a green light 10 car Tuesday. Um, these Chrome Edition cars are ridiculous, but this was cheap and I picked it up in... This one looks to be pretty good. If you've seen some previous videos that I've done on the Chrome Edition cars, there's some wackiness going on with the finish in those. Uh, that one looks like it turned out okay, so we'll see how that goes. Um, and then, oh, also in mail, we got some Ultra Red action. I got this Mustang. America's Finest. This is a fairly rare Ultra Red because uh, it actually is 3% of 3,600, and that's how many there are. So, basically, what is 1%? So, what is that? 36 times 3, right? Somewhere in there. So, like, a hundred under 150. If my math is uh, on the fly is at all correct. Uh, this thing is pretty cool. Shout out to the Hot Wheels Hunter for pointing out this one on the eBay that someone was selling this for cheaper than it normally goes. This one usually is pretty hard to get and somewhat expensive on eBay, but every once in a while, if you uh, hunt it out, you can find a good deal on it, and I got a good deal on this one, so I was happy. It's got an ultra base. base. Um, this will be probably reserved for a Free the Peace Friday. We'll see. I'm probably not going to open that one up, uh, but I am going to open up these two. So these two, I got both of these ultra reds off of Facebook. Uh, one's from a gentleman. I forgot his name, um, so I apologize. I don't even know if he watches my videos. I'm, I don't think he actually does, but this is the uh, 62 Chevy Impala SS. Uh, this is from Premium Release 1. And this is also from 2019 Premium Release 1, and this is uh, from uh, Michael Dylan Turret. I think is how you pronounce your name. And uh, he is on Facebook. Uh, check out his facebook group is really cool it's uh called diecast classicists so check out that if you want to see some really cool like premium diecast neat kind of odd stuff typically is what you're going to see on that facebook group i'm part of it i post to it um as often as i can whenever i i have a car that i've taken pictures of that i think is appropriate to share to that group i share it and uh, it's just a cool group because it's all like pictures of it's mostly just uh, like interesting vehicles. It's not, you know, your run of the mill Hot Wheels. I mean, I know a lot of you love Hot Wheels. I love Hot Wheels, too. Um, but these are, you know, just interesting, different, some different stuff. So we're actually going to open up both of these and their regular uh, release counterparts in the second segment of this video. So we've got, you know, with these two, that's six auto world to open up. So I'm stoked to get it. Um, I'm only now missing the Kingswood Estate Ultra Red from this release. So it'll have a white base. All these have white bases um, and a white interior. It's the last one I need in this in this set. And I'll actually have the 2019 Premium Release 1 uh, complete, including Ultra Red. So that is fantastic. Um, so yeah, just got to find that wagon. It's actually probably going to be the tough one of the bunch. Because um, I think the other one was a Mustang, a Cadillac and a Dodge Polara. So definitely the Kingswood, or not, the, it's not a Kingswood, sorry, the Buick Estate Wagon um, is going to be the most desirable out of all of them. So I got the hardest one uh, is last. All right, so next we got the Fast and the Furious 5-pack. So I did pick up that as well. The only car, actually there's two cars in here that I, that I really enjoy. Um, one is this uh, Ford Escort. The other one is the Buick Grand Sport or Buick Grand Sport, Corvette Grand Sport Roadster. So those two are kind of the cars that, that I like in this pack. But we're going to go ahead and open up that in the second segment of the video. So that's pretty much going to be it. I do have a few other things. They're actually sitting right over here. We're going to look at those in a future video. I didn't realize they were visible there. Um, I found a few other things, but yeah, I'm gonna. Those are going to be pushed off till next week. I do have my local meet is actually today, Saturday. Um, so hopefully I, I snagged a couple of cool things there. I'm gonna have to cut it short again for the meet because I got other stuff going on. It's just the summer, it's busy, um, and yada, yada, yada. All right, so let's go ahead and flip the camera around and let's take a look at some, some well, we got two Ultra Rest to look at, we got a Mini GT to look at, and a bunch of Hot Wheels. So let's check it out, so stay tuned. Okay, so let's start this second half of the video out by taking a peek at this uh, Toyota 
Supra in super white. Uh, these are Miho exclusives. Miho brings Mini GT to the US. These are limited to 4,800 pieces, so fairly limited. Uh, Mini GT is a brand that I have um, pretty much, I don't know, fallen in love with. I, I really, really like them. I, I think that they're done very, very well. Uh, they're 164 scale. Um, I don't know if they're true 164 scale. Uh, some people have said they look like they kind of run a little bit big. Um, I have not been able to either confirm that or deny it as of yet. Uh, the Mio exclusive cars come in a bubble. They also come with this really cool box. Um, if you're not aware of this, I will just show this off one more time here. This is a very nice, thick cardboard, well-printed box. But the selling point of it is it does have that little plastic insert in there. And that's so you can store your car in there and you can store it in the box. I love that. I love that so much. Um, Auto World does that as well with their premium die cast. So I'm a huge fan. I'm a huge fan of this and I'm a huge fan of uh, Tomica Limited Vintage also does that as well. Um, and to kind of a lesser degree, so does Kyosho and some other brands too come with the box. Something convenient to actually store and protect your die cast collectible uh, should you want to store it. All right. This thing, of course, is going on display, but either way, it's great to have that option. So here's this little Supra casting. Um, I have shown in a previous video the Tarmac Works one. Let's see if we can get some focus there. Which actually, you know, we probably should take a peek at that as well. Um, just to kind of compare, I think that's probably a good idea. Give me one second here. I can see it from here, so I'm just going to quickly grab it. Now, the Tarmac Works one is going to be more of a um, racing style car. But we will take a peek at it here in just a sec. So... Now that I've got it with me. So here is the Mini GT in white. Very, very basic. You do get uh, side mirrors. Which are not like the rubbery plastic you normally get with uh, these models. Um, it looks pretty good. The wheel well over here looks a little bit choppy. For some reason, I'm not sure what happened there. Uh, the wheels and tires look good. Um, you got the defoggers on the, on the windows. Uh, you do get lensed detail for the headlights. You also get uh, inserted taillights, which actually look really good on this one. Toyota Supra. And Mini GT is one of those brands. I think I probably will try to pick up like one example of every casting that they put out, just because uh, so far I've been very, very impressed with them. Uh, this particular model... It's pretty good. I'm not, I'm not as excited about this as I've been about some of the previous models. Uh, mainly, I don't know something, something a little bit of something bugs me about this wheel well right here, just being kind of choppy and how it's cut out. I'm not sure what caused that, but uh, that's gonna definitely show up if you were to take pictures, like detailed pictures of this model. You'd probably want to take them from this side of the car. Uh, because whatever that caused that is definitely going to show up. So metal base, metal body, rugged construction. I will say that about uh, Mini GT for sure. They definitely have a rugged uh, construction to them. Here is the Tarmac Works. This is very cool as well. You get the side mirrors. You get lens detail up front. Of course, the Falcon Racing livery looks awesome. Uh, you get some, there's some taillights there. The taillights I don't think look as good on this model as they do on the uh, Mini GT. Uh, but still very cool. Uh, these Tarmac works come with plastic bases. And Tarmac, this super casting rolls from Tarmac. Most of the Tarmac works cars though do not roll. All of the Mini GT cars so far that I've gotten uh, do roll. Without a doubt. Uh, so size wise... These do seem to match up perfectly um, in length, width, and height. 
So I'm guessing that uh, that kind of makes a case for that uh, Mini GT is actually true to scale because it does match with this Tarmac Works car. Uh, both of these are very cool. Both of these are welcome additions to my collection. Um, I do like them both. I like a lot of the stuff that Tarmac Works, Works puts out, and I like all of the stuff so far that Mini GTs put out, at least as far as the castings that they've selected so far. And I just think they both, they're, they're different. So they're both, you can't really compare the two. Um, Tarmac Works kind of has a very different style uh, to how they construct their castings and what kind of stuff they put out than Mini GT. Uh, Mini GT, I think, is just a little bit more up my alley. I like the way they're constructed. They just seem very, very rugged and um, very cool models, in spite of the fact that this one's got something weird going on with that wheel well. So just to be real, we're pointing that out. All right. <clears throat> so there's that. Next, we're going to take a look at my favorite brand in domestic die cast, which is, of course, Auto World. If you watch my channel, you guys know that I adore Auto World. And one of the most fantastic things that has happened this year is they did away with the color tires on the chases. And, of course, we're going to look at two chases today. Um, so this is the version A of the 1962 Chevy Impala SS. We're going to go ahead and open it up. And, again, these come with boxes. And they also come with the plastic inserts, which is this right here. This fits inside of this box and houses the car. So if you want to store them, that's the way you do it. It's not quite as inclusive as the uh, Mini GT stuff because it doesn't protect the one side. So this side still will rub against cardboard, but it should hold it so tight in there that it's not gonna get much motion in there and you shouldn't have it much packaging rub, if any at all. So here it is in black, the Impala. This is one, a newer casting from Auto World. And it's kind of cool. It's one of the ones that is also able to be put out as a convertible, which you've seen in previous releases. It's got an open hood, of course. Standard stuff for Auto World. The top of this car is plastic, and it is plastic because the convertible version just removes this piece, basically. Um... It's kind of a cool tooling, not something I was terribly excited about, but I know that Auto World now is listening to collectors for sure, and they are trying to kind of fire up their lineup, um, especially with the, the Chevys that came out, the Chevy trucks that came out this year. Um, we're going to see a Ford truck next year, which I'm not sure how many people are excited about that one. That one's kind of cool, but I'm not super excited about it because Greenlight already does them. And then we're going to see a Dodge Stealth, which I think is an amazing choice. Um that they picked that car to do it. I'm so happy that they picked that car. That's the kind of stuff I'm talking about. All right, so here is the version B. Uh, what color did they say this is? This one is Laurel Green, Yanny Green, Poly. Uh, I definitely actually like it in the green Poly, I think a little bit better. It's got a green interior. You can kind of see more of the details, the tooling. That Chevy logo right up there in the hood looks awesome. Um, very nicely detailed. It's a cool car. Um, pretty neat. Um, there's a MG Minis exclusive of this car coming out, which I hope I'm going to be able to get my hands on. Hit up MG Minis on uh, Instagram. So it's purple. It's going to be pretty awesome. So I'm definitely going to want to try to get that one somehow. Uh, but this thing is really neat, and it, it looks pretty good. Uh, which color do you like better? you like the black one or the green one, laurel green? Uh, this one I did notice the base is, is that unspun. It looks like it might be. Yeah, maybe it is mushroomed a little bit, but... The base is definitely raised a little bit. Can't push too hard on this because you'll probably crack that plastic. This one's got a little bit of a rake to it. Almost like a gasser look. Someone heavy sitting in the back. All right, so there's that. And then, of course, the Ultra Red. So the Ultra Reds for this release are essentially version a cars 
however they have white interiors and they have white bases and of course the standard ultra red body so ultra red body white interiors white bases that is the ultra red other than that they're centrally the a release car whether or not you find them on a b card or an a card for the version for the series that does not matter it is going to be the same car in either one so they are three percent of the overall production line so they are actually three percent of eight thousand which is what what is that three times 80 right am i right 240 a piece so there's 240 of these out there if my math is correct if it's not correct me in the comments please I used to be really really bad at math and then i started getting good at math uh, when i started studying electrical engineering technology little side note um all right so anyway but now I've, it's been a long time since that and i'm pretty rusty all right pretty cool ultra red not my favorite not my like i said not my favorite auto world casting but it does look all right and i'm just glad to check that ultra red off the list because you know i'm an ultra red completionist or auto world completionist so i have to have every release all right one that i was a lot more excited about was this this is the 1966 chevy impala ss so another impala this one is the marina blue poly one from version a um, this car generally does not trip my trigger at all you know what i should have got out a another impala to take a peek at because normally this casting is super boring to me um in the way that they made this one look, it just looks so much better. In fact, I'm going to pause this. I'm going to go grab another one just to take a peek at it. Hang on one second. Okay, so I'm back. I had to go grab one of these. This is the original release of this Impala. Okay. It's nice. It's got some weird little dark fingerprint down there. That's, that's strange. Anyway, it's nice. It's not bad looking. It's just not very exciting. It's not very exciting to me. Um, out of the cars in this, the release, this uh, premium release one, the first released from Auto World, uh, this is probably my least favorite casting from it. Um, it is all right looking. It's definitely good. It's got the quality. It's got you know all the good detail that Auto World does. It's heavy. It's awesome. Whatever. Just wasn't very excited about it. Now, when they come out with this one here. Look how much cooler that looks with a black top, those hubcaps on there, um, just different wheels and tires. It just looks so much cooler like this in this blue color. So pretty similar blue, actually, but just it looks, I don't know, way better like that with black top. So I just had to grab that out just to show you, um, show you something there. Just how wheels and tires and some small tiny details and options on a car just totally change the way it looks and change the way I feel about the car. Uh, so this one, of course, has a hood that opens. Seeing if I can get that open, we can't. So I'm just going to leave it shut for now. But yeah, this looks amazing. It looks great in blue. And then it looks really awesome. And just straight tuxedo black no. getting black auto world cars to me is almost like getting ultra red cars I, I there is I don't think of every casting there's a black version of it out yet but a lot of them there is black a black version of the car out and um, they are very very cool so that just looks awesome i do see one issue with it just looking at this there's like little oil on that's normal for these castings by the way they're going to come up with like this weird like residue on them i'm not sure if that's just the, from the manufacturing process that preserves the paint or something um it's weird though there's like a sunken in back window here you kind of see that little how that's sunken in doesn't exist on this one but it is here on this one let's see if we can get the Put open on this one easily. And nope, I'm not gonna get it. That's okay. Um, I can probably fix that windshield by just poking something in the back there and popping it right into place, which I probably will do. I'm not gonna do it on camera. Again, that doesn't mean that that's an acceptable thing. I don't like a lot of 
issues with die cast it, especially like these I know these premium ones are trying to produce them at an affordable level and honestly auto world does a great job because you get a lot of detail you get a lot of metal and for like the five dollar retail price point um, they're definitely uh, bang for the buck like number one for sure uh, for what you get for what you pay like it's pretty ridiculous actually that how cheap these are um, in comparison because there's some like Tomica Limited Vintage I, and I get it Tomica Limited Vintage has the suspension they got mostly lens detail for headlights and taillights and all that stuff but the detail is there uh, the qu build quality is really there but you pay a lot more for those and uh, this coming in at a five dollar price point or if you're buying them on the second hand market or from hobby dealers and stuff sometimes it can be a little bit more than that but really no more usually than like seven dollars a car let's just say and uh, what you get for that is uh, uh, I think quite a lot of value all right so let's get into the ultra red before I keep jabbering on here here's the ultra red it is on the version B card but of course it does not matter what card it's on it's still going to have the same attributes as all the ultra reds in the same series so it has a white base it has a white interior it also has the attributes of the version a car so it's got the flat black roof and then it also has the blue rims or hubcaps or whatever and there you have it there's the ultra red that's a sweet one i'm glad to have it i think actually the contrast with the blue rims in the red car i think look really good um, so i think it is definitely pretty cool and i'm definitely glad to uh, collect another ultra red check another one off the list and just cool i like the chase program from auto world as well i wasn't a huge fan when they started coloring the tires that kind of irked me a little bit because i just like the realism of auto world cars and just the colored tire thing i understand it um from a chase car perspective it did make you know the chase is a lot more noticeable uh, but to me who really collects cars because i like the way they look um you know as far as being realistic or somewhat realistic colored tires just doesn't really do it like this technically is believable impossible for a real car you know the white base i really don't care about obviously the white interior is cool but uh, the ultra red color on a regular car you know it's a it's a possible real car they're just i haven't seen any car ever on the road with red tires or white tires so doesn't mean that's not something possible i guess but white tires i think we get dirty pretty quick all right so there's that <clears throat> and next up all we got left is some hot wheels so if you're a hot wheels fan stick around here we go we're going to start with this 2005 ford mustang and we're going to go through these fairly quickly before we summarize the video here this mustang casting i'm not a huge fan on a fan of my buddy angel though digs mustangs quite a bit um so he'll enjoy this one this uh it's a good color though the red color it's almost ultra reddish and uh i do like that this thing moves that's kind of neat make it track ready or like real life track ready so that's kind of cool um this is probably the best looking uh version of this car that's been out i would say of this casting and then uh here's another kroger exclusive the 71 el camino in white with blue flames Uh, pretty neat not a huge fan of this casting it's it is pretty plain Jane and don't really care about it too much but uh, it looks pretty good in this kind of pearlish white with the blue kind of metallic blue flames looks okay and then uh, the, probably the coolest casting out of the Kroger exclusive, as far as I'm concerned, is the 16 Cadillac ATS VR in blue. Yeah, it's still kind of boring, though, isn't it? Just to me, it is. Um, 
I do like that the casting has a lens detail for the headlights that are actually part of the windshield piece. Um, get a little bit of that uh, gold lip missing on the wheel there. Not a huge deal, I don't think. It's an alright car. Uh, so there's that. This uh, Satin Gold series looks pretty nice. Here's this Firebird. I think I might already have one of these. I might have actually already shown this in a previous video. I don't remember. But I collect Firebirds, so of course this one was on the list of needs. Um, so the only other one I'm missing basically is the Bluebird 510 is the only other one I really want from the series. Just to check it off the list. But I like this casting. I think this casting is kind of cool. It's different. Very Hot Wheels. And... Uh, I don't know, it's the satin and gold look, it, it looks pretty good. Actually, probably better than the, bl the black and gold. And then uh, the Chevy 2, I always thought this casting was nice. And I think it looks pretty good in the satin and gold. Pretty styling. Yep. Yeah, the other car that I obviously don't have is the Chase car, which is the toilet. And I really don't care about the Gotta Go. I think that's a kind of a joke that they did that as a Chase car. But actually, I think it's cool that they did it because it's nice to have a Chase that I really don't have to care about ever getting. All right. And then this is the 1970 Plymouth Superbird. Cool casting. I dig this casting. Um, it's cool. It's got, I just realized it's got the number 51. Do they all have 51 on them? They do. They do. They all have 51. Okay. 51. 51. Yeah, 51. Because this is the 51st anniversary of Hot Wheels 2019. And of course, the Black and Gold series, original series, came out for the 50th anniversary. So that's kind of a cool touch in the Tampa scheme. They kind of carried this series on in a way. And um, I think this is a pretty cool looking model. So that'll join my basic Hot Wheel collection. And then we've got the Fast and the Furious 5 packs. So let's just get this done. Uh, I'm gonna open it up here. So some cool cars in here. And I think some slight variations from the singles that came out recently. Um, I'm not going to get into the variations, even though I do have all of them. There's this guy here. Uh, this is the 51 Impala. Not a bad looking car. And I'm not sure. I think it might just be a different wheels from what was found in the basics this year. I don't know. Uh, this one, Torino. All right, casting, not my favorite Torino casting. Sparkly green, looks pretty good. White stripe, of course these are all gonna be plastic base cars, metal body plastic ba base, plastic tires. Yeah, for a basic model, that looks pretty good. I like this one, Corvette Grand Sport. I just, I've always dug the Corvette Grand Sport, whether it's the Roadster um, or the, the coupe version. This thing is just pretty awesome. It's got, you get taillight detail, you got a little license plate back there, you got little minor details, but as a basic car, um, I think it does look really good. The wheels, I think, are appropriate for it, and um, yeah, I'm a fan, fan of that one as a basic. And then uh, the one I probably like the best out of this pack, this is just a really cool release from Hot Wheels, this Ford Escort. It's not the best version of it, of course there is a premium version of it that also came out this year. Um, but as a basic version, this is very close to the original release of the car in this blue. I think the, actually the only difference is the original release had a blue tinted windshield uh, where these were tinted blue up front as well, the, like the fog lights or whatever. I think it's a cool car though, and I think it's a cool release. So I think it, it might have also had chrome wheels originally, maybe not. No, it probably had the gold wheels. Because that's kind of part of it. So, that's cool. And then the Chevelle. Good old 1970 Chevelle SS. Uh, 
decent casting. I think that casting has been out a million times. Got some big fat meats on the back. Yeah, it looks all right. Nice satin finish. Almost the exact same color as this. Pretty close. Put some gold accents on here. Could be in the satin and gold series. Uh, so yeah, it looks okay. It's like a primer Chevelle kind of to match the primer Chevelle, I guess, that was in the premium line. So that's going to be it for this video. Uh, pretty decent week. Super's pretty cool. Um, as far as mini GT castings go, though, um, I will say uh, I was a lot more impressed by the Pagani Huayra, um, the NSX, the McLaren Senna. This one, I think, is a good example of the Supra. It just, that one little arc in the wheel well just bugs me. It just bugs me just a little bit. Other than that, it's really cool. Oh, and by the way, the price point for Mini GT um, in comparison to Tarmac Works, they're generally a lot cheaper than Tarmac Works, just so you know. So, almost half the cost, actually. Uh, really, though, the highlight, I think, of the week for me is this Ultra Red. Uh, I just really love it. I think it looks awesome. Um, and I'm just glad to check it off. So, someone's got that Kingswood Estate, and they want to cough that one up. Uh, not Kingswood Estate, sorry, the Buick Estate wagon, not the Chevy Kingswood. Uh, from this release, 2019 Premium Release 1, please hit me up, let me know. Let me know what you need for it, and uh, hopefully we can work something out. All right, so that's going to be it for this episode, guys. Thank you guys very much for watching. Uh, please like, comment, subscribe, all that good stuff, and have yourself a excellent day.